Salam, my name is Dr. Edmund Chow. In today's inaugural episode of the Teacher Training Clinic, I will be talking about motivation. So stay tuned. Salam, Professor Chow. خوب استی صحتت خوب است امید دارم جور و صحت پن باشی I started speaking dairy because uh, I saw a lot of your videos you were speaking dairy quite well uh, so I was kind of sure that you might understand what I mean I was asking how you are Professor Chow uh, this is Nazir from Afghanistan I have a quick question about the problem that I have while teaching uh, my students um, the problem that I uh, face while teaching is that a lot of these students uh, lack motivation for studying in Afghanistan. Um, there are plenty of reasons behind it, but what I think is that they see uh, no good future for studying. Um, I, I, I've come across a, um, a lot of students that, that they have left education because uh, they would say that there's no future for them studying English or learning mathematics like this. So my question was, how can I generate uh, motivation among my students so they they uh, keep the stone rolling in studying the, uh, English? So I hope you give me the uh, guidance for it and let me thank you for it once again in Dairy and English. Tashakur. Thank you. Salam Nazir Saib. Yak Jahan Sipas Ba Khatare Sawalitan. Your question on motivation is an important one, especially when children and adults don't see uh, the importance of learning English uh, as a foreign language. I am not going to look into the social and personal reasons for them dropping out of school, but I want to focus on what we can do as teachers to motivate them. Okay? Um, you know, I have, I have seen ESL teachers teach English grammar in a very technical way asking students to uh, memorize the grammatical rules like learning the present continuous uh, tense right the form itself is like this subject verb to be plus your verb in the ing form in this case which is the present participle in the singular pronoun form you have the she he it and the verb to be is is the present participle in the verb ing form is eating. So she is eating, he is eating, it is eating. And in the plural pronoun, you have the you, they, we are sleeping. That teaches them grammatical rules, but it does not teach them how to communicate uh, with it. When I was learning Farsi from an Iranian teacher, I told him that I was going to Kabul and I wanted to learn to speak Dari. But because there was a curriculum to, to follow, I had to memorize the Farsi script. I remember I had to read the uh, consonants and the alphabets. For example, um, Be, Re, Aleph, Nun, Bran. And I realized that the vowel is missing. It's supposed to be Baran, not Bran. But what does it mean? I didn't know the sounds or the meanings behind those symbols, right? Those symbolic consonants and, and scripts. What I wanted to learn is basic communication. And that means speaking and listening. Writing and reading um, tasks were not important at that stage of my learning. I think this is the same for your ESL or EFL students. When, I mean, why should they memorize grammatical rules? Why should they memorize vocabulary that do not matter to them? 
One fun way to learn English vocabulary is to learn pop music. You know, ask them who is their favorite singer and who is, uh, what's their favorite song. Get them to tell the class why. You know, when they say, this song is very nice, ask them to describe what the lyrics mean. Is it about a boy falling in love with a girl? Uh, with his childhood friend, for example. And this example is from Ed Sheeran's Perfect. Darling, just dive right in. Follow my lead. I found a girl. You can get everyone to look at the words and phrases in the song. And if you really want to be uh, technical and teach grammar, you can ask them to underline. Um, specific words in simple past tense or circle the words in future tense. Then get them to tell you how the meaning changes because the grammar changes. Right? So tell you, get them to tell you how the grammar changes the meanings. Like this part of the lyric, uh, like this part of the song. Well, I found a woman stronger than anyone I know. She shares my dreams. I hope that someday I'll share her home. What does it mean? Ask them to explain in very simple vocabulary. You see, using their favorite songs will make more sense to them than reading an English grammar book. Now ask them to write their own song. Maybe compose a song for their mother. Can they get it to rhyme? You can also get them to watch a scene from a movie. You can turn off the sounds, the volume, and ask them to describe what is happening uh, in the scene. Watch it again. When the, with the volume up and check if they were accurate in their predictions. Now stop the scene halfway and ask them to predict uh, what will happen next. Then get them to write a short paragraph or talk to their friends what the ending should look like. Then watch the movie again. And it's the fun part of trying to clarify what your predictions were. But the fun part is really watching the movie. You see, these are all fun activities that you can do to motivate them to learn. What is important here is that you use real world contexts to engage them. Music, movies, uh, mobile phone apps, games, many things that they use in their daily life. You see, authentic Learning happens when they can solve real-world problems. And in the case of mathematics, ask them to uh, calculate the distance from the school to their home. And by looking at a map, find the nearest and perhaps the safest way home. Or ask them to predict how many pieces of naan they can buy if they have two dollars or five dollars then get them to really buy none on the way home and if they can solve real world problems they will probably be a lot more motivated to learn English or mathematics in this case at this point I want to share a theory with you so come on in Lev Vygotsky a Soviet psychologist develop this concept of the zone of proximal development. It is defined as the distance between the actual development level as determined by independent problem solving and the level of potential development as determined through problem solving under adult guidance or in collaboration with more capable peers. Now, if you look at the graph, the x-axis is the level of competence.
And the why exists is a level of challenge. The line is where the child is able to accomplish the task independently. All right? And anything above this line means that the task will be increasingly challenging. It gets more difficult for the child, hence there is a growing level of anxiety because it's above what the child can do. But if the task is below what the child can do independently, the task becomes boring because I can already do this. All right, so in both situations, it can be unmotivating to the learner. In ZPD, the child is able to accomplish tasks because there is adult supervision or adult guidance as well as peer collaboration where they help each other to achieve higher um, order thinking tasks. In other words, as a teacher, you need to find the right task in increasing levels of difficulty so that they are motivated enough to challenge themselves to want to perform better. Now, let me summarize the three things that I've said. Number one, do not get them to memorize grammatical rules or mathematical rules because they do not mean anything uh, to the learners. Number two, instead give them meaningful and fun tasks and activities that are relevant in their own context. For example, listening to pop music, watching a movie, or playing a game, or using a mobile phone application. Ask them to talk about their experiences or analyze the language and the meanings that are used when engaging in that activity. Number three, scaffold these activities by slowly increasing the levels of difficulty so that they are self-motivated enough to want to do the task independently. And this allows them to accomplish um, a lot more things in the classroom. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, write me an email with a voice recording. Tell me who you are, what you teach, and what your situation is with your question. Hopefully, I'm able to give you some tips to better engage learning in the classroom. All right, till the next episode, Tashako and Khura Hafez.